simple to do. You just need to do three things. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to do this kick with a simple tutorial, how to do the run up to advance this kick to the next level, and how you can also teach this to your students. Number one, you're going to bend your knee sideways. That's basically it. So as you go one like this, you're going to feel a little stretch on your glutes. You're going to go one and stretch it out, two and stretch it out. And a little tweak when you do this motion, try not to keep this leg straight down like this. Try to go inside. So you're going to go inside, almost like you're doing a roundhouse kick, but a downward roundhouse kick. So this is very important to try as you do this. You're going to get used to this feeling. Number two, you're going to throw your left arm and your left shoulder. The key point here is your shoulder. If your shoulder does not turn, your body won't turn. If I only try to turn with my arm, my shoulder is locked in place. But if I turn with my arm and my shoulder at the same time, you'll have a smoother spin. So that is very important to have the shoulder to turn your body. So if your left side is turning a lot more, you'll spin gradually. If you try to spin hard on the right shoulder and the right arm, it won't spin much. So if you give it a try, just go like this and throw your left shoulder back. So you just go one and you see it opens up. But if you just keep this here and just try to spin your body with your right arm and my right shoulder, then it doesn't really do much. It kind of locks in place like this. But if you open this, you'll spin a lot more. So this is the key component to your jump spin. So keep practicing in this order. One, two, three. So once again, different angle. One, two, three. And you see my body naturally turns in that direction. So you're going to go one, two, three. And if you keep practicing in this manner, you will understand when to use this twist. Number three is Basically, you put it together, but the only thing you want to focus here is try to land on your left leg first and then follow up with your right leg. So I'll show you what that looks like. You're going to go one, two, three, and you jump, land, land. So you're going to go one motion, one, land, land. If you do this enough times, you'll find it very easy. But the only thing as you're spinning in the air, your legs will do a separation because of the spin velocity. So you want to maintain your heel to your butt. Which heel? Your kicking heel. So if you're kicking with your right leg, you want to maintain that heel to your butt. So you're going to go one, two, three. And basically, that's it. If you, if you just do this, open your shoulder, tuck, and heel to your butt, and think about landing on your left leg only, then you basically have what is called this Rana's kick. Easy. Part two of this video, we're going to learn how to run into it and jump into it. So basically, you're just going to jog in place and you're going to step with your left foot as big as possible. Think about it as a long stance, but open your left foot. This is important because this will allow your hip to open up so you can get that free flow when you're jumping. If you put your foot straight and you try, your hips are locked into place. So you want to make sure you open your foot to open your hips this way not to lock your hips. Open and then swing. Number one, jog. Number two, open. And your left hand goes down here as if you're going to draw a sword and your right hand is going to go up like this. And you're going to turn with your shoulder. So you're going to go one like this. Once again, running one. So as soon as you put your left foot stomped to the ground, you're going to swing your left hand at the same time your left foot goes forward. So it's going to go like this. So jogging in place, side view, sword, stomping up. Jogging in place, sword, stomping up. Last one, jogging in place, sword, stomping up. So just like how I showed you, practice step by step with this video. Rewind it back if you need to. And once you get this down, I want you to try to do it in a smooth motion but this time with the jump. Jogging in place, smooth motion, but with the jump. So the jump comes from two variations. Number one is the pump up for your knee, and number two is your chest. 
Imagine your chest is tied to a string or a chain that's on the ceiling. And as soon as you're about to do that pump up, this string or your chest goes super high, as high as you can. This will allow your height. So think about knee, chest, and stomp together. Stomp, knee, chest, and together. So running in place, one, and then together. Get this part down, you just wanna combine what I told you in the previous beginning of the video, and combine number one and number two together. So you don't really need a lot of run up to practice this. Once you get very good, then you can start running a little bit longer. But just for understanding purposes with your mind and body, you wanna go in place and try to spin. In place, just like that. So then you'll be able to land on your left leg and you'll be able to kick with your right leg. Number two, you're going to throw your left arm and your left shoulder. The key point, just keep practicing with this fundamental and you'll have something like this. You will get them into their fighting stance or their guarding stance. Number two, you're going to ask them to put their knee over their thigh. So over their thigh like this, kind of in a funny motion and try to pivot on the ball of your foot with your supporting leg and just do this. Just ask them to do this on their spot a couple times, just like so, so they understand the wraparound effect. Number two, you're gonna ask them to do this with their right hand, kind of like a hook, at the same time they do the wrap around. So you're gonna ask them to go one, two, and try to make that 360 circle. Now once you get that part, you're gonna ask them to go one, down, roundhouse kick. Once again, one, down, roundhouse kick. Now the most important thing when they're doing this roundhouse kick, they have to do their counterbalance and they have to put their hand to the chest so then when they kick, they don't overturn. Now the hard part will come here. You're gonna ask them to draw a sword and at the same time, bring your left leg up. You're gonna draw a sword as they stomp to the ground, just like this. Very easy. Now, second part, as soon as they hit the floor, they're gonna jump up and do the same thing. One and then two. Number two, you're going to throw your left arm and your left shoulder. The key point here is your shoulder. If your shoulder does not turn, your body won't turn. If I only try to turn with my arm, my shoulder is locked in place. But if I turn with my arm, you want to ask them to spring up in the air. Imagine a slinky. A slinky goes like this. There's no height and no jump. But if you imagine a spring, a very hard spring, if it falls to the ground with something heavy, then it's going to jump right up. This is the key opponent when you are doing this particular exercise. So once they understand the store, stomp, jump, tuck, land, land, then basically match them up with a partner, get the partner to hold a target, and get that partner to kick that target with this method. And you'll be surprised, it's pretty easy. So imagine you're holding the target in front of me, I'm gonna try to kick it, and just tell them not to imagine to throw the kick really hard, I want you to focus on spinning because if you can't get that spin around, the kick is useless. So you want to execute that spin first. That is number one. And then once you feel that you're kind of going around, just throw your leg out there. Don't even think about kicking. Because once they think about kicking, they're going to do something like this. And then they're going to kick way too early. So tell them, you got to spin first. When you land it, then just throw your leg out there. Spin first when you land and just throw your leg out there. So get them to practice this many times and they will get it eventually. Now some students may progress faster than the other students, that is perfectly fine. You wanna make sure that everyone understands this systematic motion so that they get the basic foundations. And you just tell them to practice at home every single day until their next class and you'll see how much improvement that they have made after that one session. Because realistically speaking, a person can learn a backflip maybe within five minutes or 10 minutes. All it takes is just the right instructions and system so that they can get that technique. Same with Taekwondo skills. So once you're able to do that and the students are able to do that kick, you're going to ask them to 
go for a little bit of a jog, just like how you guys trained at the very beginning of the video and stage two of this video. You're gonna ask them to jog in place, the person's holding a target, and you're gonna ask them to go one, two, bam, and see if they can kick that target. So this will be the final step. I hope that this helps you guys out. If you're an instructor out there, good luck on teaching your students. If you have any questions, feel free to just comment down or just give a comment down below and it helps bring out this community as well. Well, thank you so much and we'll see you in the next video.